Hello everyone, welcome to Eternal Brews. My name is Pocho, and today we're going to be looking at dragons. Uh, yeah, we're doing an expedition brew. Uh, this is Chroma Conclave, our uh, evil dragon pile. Uh, we are having a delightful time with it. It's really, really fun. This is dragon-based control, and we are playing around with basically all of the interesting shenanigans related to uh, Forge, or rather Dragon Forge, combined with a toolkit of useful dragons and a couple of very cheap ones that we want to play consistently. Uh, we have the new promo that has just been shown up, so the new hero is available. Uh, you can now get copies of it for free by winning games. Uh, one every game or one every day for, uh, I believe, the next probably week or so. Uh, so uh, Draco Witch Raska is available, and let's see if we can take a look at her. There's actually a bug right now sometimes where sometimes we can't see the card, but there we go. All right, so Draco Witch Raska. When you play a dragon, sacrifice Raska you, to double its strength and health at the start of your turn. If you have seven or more dragons in your void with different names, sacrifice, Ra sacrifice Raska to play them. Uh, obviously that bottom text is super exciting. You're not going to see too much of that in this deck, but we're going to try at least, and hopefully we'll get like a recording of that actually happening. Uh, this deck certainly stands a decent chance of that, but mostly what we're doing is we're using Draco West Raska as a simple 2-2 that we can play early on that draws removal, and also a way to double up on very big charging dragons later on. So this card's really interesting. I like the design of it a lot. There's a lot of different ways that you can sort of work with dragons. This is only one of them, but it's also the one that's most interesting if you want to play a number of different dragons with a lot of different uh, possibilities. You can also do mill dragons. That seems like the most uh, likely combination. Uh, I like mill with remembrance. There's definitely some fun stuff happening there. Uh, but yeah, there's not enough space for, for that in this deck because we are playing pretty much entirely value-based control, and we're going to be doing it with a wide variety of dragons. So, okay. Moving up the line, we're going to talk about each of the dragons in turns, but first let's talk about the dragon enablers. We have Kozen Darkheart, a 1-5 that says when you play a dragon with a name you don't already have, create and draw a treasure trove. And Mastery 3, play a 4-4 Cinder Dragon with flying, which of course also gets you a treasure trove. Kozen Darkheart turns basically all of your dragons into card advantage. Since we are not playing a lot of multiple dragons, uh, we will typically get a treasure trove every single time that we play a dragon, with the exception of Teething Whelp, which we will usually have at least one down before Kozen comes out, and uh, Eclipse Dragon, which we may end up having multiples of, but uh, typically getting an Eclipse Dragon down is reward enough in itself, and getting at least one treasure trove off of one is certainly not that big of a deal. So it goes in Dark Heart as the big dragon enabler. We also have one copy of Slayer's Edge. I'm keeping this limited because its general effect is somewhat good, but also it's a pretty expensive card and fairly bad at like general removal. Uh, one of the things we're focusing on in this deck is keeping a decent amount of interaction with the other forms of decks so that we can get to all of these late game dragons. We're trying not to be too greedy and play a limited number of these ca these cards, but yeah, at least one Slayer's Edge is nice because it tends to draw you two to three cards in addition to being a 5-2. Uh, most often it's just going to draw you, I think, one treasure trove, and that's not too bad, but we, we wanted to keep that somewhat low. We're not running a lot of removal at uh, 4 cost or above, including uh, Cremate, which is the one that I'm considering running 4 copies of in future versions of this deck. But at the moment, feeling pretty good about what kind of removal we have going on. Uh, so aside from that, we also have the Den of Ordeals, the site that says at the start of your turn, create and draw a treasure, tro treasure trove for each different name among your dragons, and also has Nakova and Molot's Agenda, Talon Dive, Streets of Flame, is, and The End is Near. I've basically never seen Talon Dive be useful even in a dragon deck. Streets of Flame is wonderful, The End is Near is delightful, and uh, combined with treasure troves, End is Near means that you are drawing dragons almost every turn or at least drawing removal almost every turn. And with those treasure troves, yeah, you get a big old pile of awesome things. You just have to be a little bit careful to make sure that you have the power to play those dragons since we have a couple of seven or eight cost dragons as well, as well as some deep influence. But with seek powers in the deck, there are ways to pick them up even if we miss. So it's not too big of a deal if End is Near flips at six because we're, we're generally feeling pretty good about that. Okay, so yeah. And then of course, Nakova and Malat, flying Aegis Berserk, summon deal void damage to each enemy, can't be blocked by Aegis, enemies killed this turn and get Voidbound. Card is ridiculous, ends games very, very quickly, very, very hard not to get murdered by, so certainly on the high end of the list. 
Okay, so Dragon Forge draws a dragon or weapon of your choice from your deck and reduces its cost by one. And we care about differently named dragons for all of our different abilities, but we also care about basically having a toolkit of dragons that we can pick up with Dragon Forge to get whatever it is that we particularly need. Voprex Hope's End is a really good game ender that if you have a lot of dragons, it's just a great way to win the game. Voprex the Great Ruin is better when you're somewhat behind and your opponent has an even board and an even hand and is just in a really, really good position. Uh, both work in different situations. I've generally found Voprex Great Ruin to be more useful, but Hope's End is, of course, a wonderful way to finish off a game. Stone Spelt Dragon melts all relics. Rhyme Scale Draconis permafrosts attacking enemy units, which is extremely strong. Mist Veil Drake uh, gains an Aegis and gives you a little bit more of a bonus. Um, Kenna Shaman of the Scale kills things that have Aegis, which is really, really relevant. Soulfire Drake is straight up damage, also gives charge to every single one of your dragons, since all of your dragons already have flying. Uh, uh, Carvet Solar Dragon has Life Steal and plays a bunch of cultists, which is really, really good on defense if you're getting into some sort of basically uh, rough scenario. Raging Fire Maw is a card that's really, really good with doubling effects and also just one of the cheaper dragons that you can play. It is the easiest one to get if you want to play a dragon on three and don't have power to play Eclipse Dragon, which of course is our four copy, four, four flying charge quick draw. At the start of the enemy turn, you get th plus three power this turn. This card works really well with Dragon Forge. It works well with Cremate, uh, which we are currently not running in the deck, but does exist in some versions of this deck, I would say. And then in general, like it's just a really, really powerful, aggressive flyer with a good body, and it's really, really good if you double it with Drago with Rosca, which is also a pretty important deal. So we run four copies of this because it's kind of a linchpin of the deck. It's still the most powerful, probably the most powerful dragon on the list, like just in terms of what you're getting for your value, like this card's really, really strong. It's always been one of the better cards to play that actually has the name dragon on it. Um, a lot of the other stuff is a little bit more flashy, but this one's really, really consistent. It's just a bedrock of the uh, whole set, so super, super solid on that front. Uh, beyond that, we run a decent amount of removal. Edict of Shavka is really, really strong against green and blue cards, also pings up small flyers or anything else that might cause us uh, small problems in those fronts. Treachery removes units and sites from the enemy's hand, which is really, really handy since Shavka also hits sites. So we have good, very focused removal that can hit both units and sites. And Voprex's choice causes players to sacrifice a unit of their choice or draw a dragon or weapon from your void. Use this often, use it early to make people sacrifice units uh, as fast as you can, because Voprex's choice is less useful once your opponent has multiple units on the board. But it is still a great way to thin things out, to make it easier for some of your other cards to go through, and to just generally keep the board somewhat clear for your big dragons to come down and make a big mess, which is always delightful. Uh, and Voprex's choice, of course, also gets dragons back from your void, as well as Slayer's Edges, which you can then repeat multiple times. So solid, solid stuff on that front. Something worth keeping an eye on because of its general abilities. Our current uh, market includes Emblem of Shavka for extra power and also potentially a 3-3 Overwhelm unit if we desperately need one. Storm Spiral, which uh, will deal 3 damage with Howling Peak Smuggler and is effectively our Malediction in the uh, deck. It's also a fast speed card, so you can play it after Eclipse Dragon, which is nice. But uh, for the most part, we decided to not run four of these in the main because it was being a little bit ineffective in some cases. Draconic Ire is attachment destruction you can play from your market. Uh, it doesn't have a lot more purpose than that. I actually have considered doubling up on uh, attachment destruction since it's so important in this very curse-ridden format, but in general being able to toss a permafrost off of your opponent or break a uh, waystone fragment or any sort of like obelisk type effect, cur crack a curse, uh, destroy blood of Makar, there's just so many different uses for uh, attachment destruction in this format and it's really really easy to hit an opponent with a dragon and thus get draconic ire. So yeah, really really strong option, very very good. Cremate is currently just like another extra removal in case you need a little bit more uh, this might go main board at some point and be replaced with a boar or something along those lines. And Garden of Omens reduces the cost of treasure troves, allowing you to cycle through all those cards very quickly, while also giving you a different site to play around with that has uh, Ice Bolt attached and resurface and a number of other useful abilities, including more attachment destruction. Yay, good, good stuff. Um, that's pretty much it. This deck is 
mostly self-explanatory. We're playing just a lot of different dragons, and then because all of our cards reference diff differently named dragons in some way, uh, the fact that we have this sort of singleton setup means that we basically just get to select from a toolkit and then reap the advantages of that toolkit in the form of more consistent draw through treasure troves. It's pretty fun. It's pretty easy. It's actually pretty good. We've been having very, very good results with it so far. So we're going to be uh, showing it off right now, and uh, we'll see you in a couple of games. Cheers. All right, here we are up against Shady. We're going to redraw and see what we can get. Seed of Chaos, Seed of Fury, Fire Sigil. Looks like an opening hand as far as things are concerned. I would say that with Seek Power here, we can probably throw up a decent amount of stuff. Like This is looking like probably the thing that we're looking for. Um, so yeah, we have the Slayer's Edge, we have Voprex, which is probably going to get traded into the market for later, but might end up being, yeah, stuck around for a little bit. Currently we're just, uh, getting set up, not doing anything too crazy. Uh, would want a little bit more shadow here. Triple blue is also important, but uh, probably not as important as getting at least two shadow together. Raging Fire Maw looks good. Uh, yeah, we're going to definitely trade Voprex here because we've got... All that extra stuff, but we basically want to be able to play small dragons. Primal there, and a Linrai Evangel. Okay. That's a interesting start. I'm not really sure what we want to market for yet, so I'm not even sure if I want to market here. Uh, but probably the case is... Actually, you know what? Like, everything in here looks good. I think we're going to hold on to the Howling Peak Smuggler until we know a little bit more about what it is that we're looking for, and just play cautiously. Okay, Emblem of a car with no death elemental. Trust the winds. A delightful breeze. Gust Rider is something. This might be like a discard based deck, something like Icy Gaze or Faceless One. Trust Icy Gaze it is. Winds. A delightful breeze. Are you going to see Faceless One too? Shadowlands Guide, I'm sure there's a Faceless One in there. All right, so Shadow here. I think I'm going to play the Raging Fire Maw, although it's pretty tempting to go for the... Um... Yeah, actually. I think we're, we should go for the Storm Spiral here. We've got a decent board set up already. We want to sort of just be able to clear as much of it as we can. Uh, clearly with like Shadowlands guides and stuff, there's going to be a lot of like replaying of those cards. So we got to be somewhat careful. Uh, I think here we just block. Nothing too crazy happening. I don't need the spell damage here, so Storm Spiral will just be a clear. Opponent appears to be considering using one of those Icy Gases right now. Although they discarded one, so assumably they don't have another one. We'll see. All right. Fire Maw into Seed of Fury, Slayer's Edge will draw me one card, which I probably don't need to do. But I could also Storm Spiral into, like, Teething Well, so there's some options here. Cool. All right, so we got a ton of value on the board here that we're just going to Storm Spiral away. We'll play a Teething Whelp, and then we'll draw a bunch of cards with Slayer's Edge. At least that's the hope. End of Ordeals. I'm going to play the Cobalt Coin so that I have access to Den of Ordeals. I don't think I have any objective, uh, any any interest in actually getting the curse down, so we're just going just gonna to set everything up. This is a good time to sacrifice that card immediately, so let's go ahead and Den of Ordeals. And rather than using our Streets of Flame, we will Talon Dive. Which will then get countered, so the 3-2 dies. I 
At the start of my next turn, I get two treasure troves. Uh, Kozen Darkheart's a lovely card, and so is Slayer's Edge, so we're in pretty good shape here. Streets of Flame kills that thing. Uh, that seems worth it. Thoprex seems pretty worth it too, although honestly I am looking for a little bit more power here. Uh, maybe we will... Maybe we will Treasure Trove here. I'd like to Slayer's Ed, but I think Treasure Trove actually makes a lot of sense. Still didn't find any power, which is a bit unfortunate. Uh, Teething Welt Place. It's a... Uh, I've already got a Teething Whelp out, so we don't really have any reason to hold the other Teething Whelp, except for Sweepers, of course. Okay! Way ahead on value, Storm Spiral was doing plenty of work, so nothing too crazy happening there. <laughs> we, we stopped recording just a second before this happened. This is actually my second one today. But, uh, yeah, there you go. Good times. All right, here we are against Big Daddy Chikuli. Um, yeah, okay, I think we're going to keep this hand. Voprex's choice is strong. We've got the Seek Power available, so we can just go fire into Shadow, choice things away until we are ready to Teething Whelp, and then be good to go. Um, yeah, this seems like it's going to be very, very strong to start. So fire, Seek, Shadow. And then we have both colors, so if there's units, we can kill them. Trouble on the horizon. I've seen a lot of Borderlands lookouts lately. Voprex's choice is fortunately pretty good against them. Time here. Gives me Resolute Monk is pretty scary. So I think we'll kill that too. And then, yeah, we're, we're pretty good to go. At this point, Dragonforge might get us something like a big board drop. Um, I kind of feel like that 2-5 is definitely not bad here. I'm also wondering how much I want to play Teething Well, It's pretty close. They've got a lot of good aggression going on, so I'm a bit worried, but we'll see what we can do. Okay, apparently not that good. <laughs> All right, new round against Zdra... We round against Zdravovich. Uh, we have Seek Power, Seed of Chaos, Fire Sigil, and Shadow Sigil, so we're going to be really good to go here. Seed of Chaos into a Primal seems like the appropriate way to go. Seek, Primal. Uh, in general, what you want to do with Dragon Forges is, is if you can, you avoid playing them until after you've Eclipsed Dragon, but sometimes you do need a particular thing to happen, so... Uh, just uh, just something to note. Like we, we we like to use Edict of Shavka and like our slower spells and just generally set up. Uh, here I think I'm probably just gonna just go for it. Um, I really wish we had a dragon that increased our power, but there isn't a isn't a toolkit dragon for that just yet. Hopefully we'll find some soon. Okay, Dragon Forge. Oh, are we gonna get countered here? That would be interesting. So Raging Fire Mop plays, but I think Eclipse Dragon is pretty much always best. Uh, other options include that Slayer's Edge, of course, which at four would not be a bad option against a deck that appears to be somewhat unitless. And we could also do, yeah, we've got a couple of other choices, but I actually think I like that Slayer's Edge. Since we have the Eclipse Dragon already, we're probably good to go there. Okay, um, yeah, let's see what you're running. Is it a lightning strike? Streets of Flame, interesting. Okay, I'm really not sure what kind of deck this is. Let's take a look at the cards in hand. Okay, there's an Eclipse Dragon, there's a Dizo's Office. So now we know. Um, Eclipse Dragon is definitely the card to ditch. And then uh, Vilbrex's choice would be a slow spell here, but we could get the Slayer's Edge back. I think I like that. Now, Dizo's Office is one of the sites that we can't kill without a charge unit of our own, so it is important for us to deal. We are playing in a sort of mirror match of... well, yeah. So there's there's a bunch of possibilities as to what can happen. 
Okay. Dragons everywhere. Certainly a thing. Obviously, we're not going to play Slayer's Edge here because that would be pretty rough. Uh, Denivore deals is still pretty strong. Right for the job. They're working on their Dezos office, which I don't really love. We're gonna go for this, because if Dezos office comes down, we have Soulfire Drake to kill it, and if um, Eclipse Dragon comes down, we kill it with Slayer's Edge, we get a card draw. So that seems like the appropriate route. Wisdom there. I didn't see what they got off Blight Pass Smuggler. I think it might have been the depleted power there, but I didn't check it in the replay. Weirdly enough, it was not Garden of Omens. But I will take that power. So Den of Ordeals kills Garden of Omens, but so does Soulfire Drake. Soulfire Drake, however, will die to Deezo's office, which I don't think I care about. Honestly, I probably should have saved Soulfire Drake because I have the Edict of Shavka. Yeah, let's just attack that. Cool. So all my dragons have charge now. That's good. Let's kill this site. Teething Whelp into our Slayer's Edge gets us a 5-2 weapon. They do get Dizo's office eventually, and we got to figure out something to do with that. Okay. No one's particularly surprised by this turn of events. Looks like they might have found a dragon forge of their own. I feel like I should eat of Shavka here, but also like I don't really need to, so we'll probably stay put. All right, that's getting interesting. I think Big Smuggler fetches cremate here, which seems appropriate. Uh, oh, I did in fact misjudge how much damage I could deal here. <laughs> but hey, we're still doing okay. Okay, so their site is going to be Dizo's office. That's going to come down... Never, because they're trading it into the market for something. I don't know what they're trading it into the market for. I'm actually very lost here. What do you get for five? We get this. Seems appropriate. Teething Whelp looks good here. I think I should save the Edict of Shavka. It's possibly they went for like an Obliterate or something here. Okay, Thunderstrike Dragon is a card. Not, I would say, a card I'm that worried about. We don't need power here at all. I have a 5-5, five five, so that's looking pretty good. The question is, where's the rest of the damage coming from? Denivore deals here doesn't seem to do a lot. Like, 
kills the Howling Peak Smuggler, but then you've still got... Okay, getting a little bit worse. And is near will toss all the power out of our deck, which I think is really useful. We're gonna throw down this. Play our Draco Witch. Treasure Trove. Oh, and a Charging Fire Moth seems pretty good. It's gonna be like four damage, which honestly we might wait. <laughs> Getting the big mole at Nakova isn't actually that important here, so we, we, we would probably just play the Fire Maw here. The only thing that undoes me here is Eclipse Dragon, and they've already played quite a few of those. Now here's an interesting question. We play Draco Witch number two. Assumably we get... do we get double-double? I must know. Turns out it's an 820. That seems like a pretty good deal. Uh, not going to attack for 20 here. I think we're just going to stay put. But I can deal 9 with that anytime I want, even if it gets permafrosted, so... Feels good to me. Alright. That hurts, but hey. Not the end of the, the world here. Uh, I think we just go... boop. And then we go boop. <laughs> Feeling pretty good overall. All right, I'm ready to rock and roll. Feels very strong. All right, one more round against Robotic Owl. Uh, this one is a redraw for sure. Not doing anything too crazy here. I see Seed of Chaos, Seed of Cunning, Fire Sigil, Seed of Chaos again. Treachery looks good here, keep that. Our opponent was playing Thunderstrike Dragon. Uh, we might run that in our market at some point. It's it's not sure about it. It's pretty slow, but it is like very good card advantage, so it's worth maybe pulling out of either Dragon Forge or the market. Um, one or the other. Treachery looks great. Uh, just gets rid of a site or a unit. Either one would be good here, and then hopefully we get some good benefits out of that. All right, I'm not in love with seeing Vera Hero in training this early. I certainly would have preferred to play like Treachery and get a little bit more going on these masteries. But yeah, we're probably going to end up with like some Omri's choices into some hot nonsense here. Treachery seems great. Let's see what we get. Pearl Abbey Smuggler seems like a pretty solid option. We got that as well, which, yeah, I'm feeling pretty good about that. I would like to get this Cobalt Coin down, but eh. The desert gives me strength. Cozen Darkheart plays into... Edict of Shavka. And now we just have this big guy to worry about. Unfortunately, this big guy is a problem. Like, there's just not a lot of things we can do. Okay. You are, in fact, empowered to do a large variety of silly things to us. All the transformations are, in fact, colorless, so they can't be hit by a lot of the edicts. This card's very strong. There's not a lot we can do about it. Um... What would you like? And it having Aegis is an entire other kettle of fish. There's a lot of problems here. Fire Sigil looks great. We're definitely going to play Eclipse Dragon. Then I think we're going to push... Since our 1-5 can stand back and defend us against a lot of threats. Seed of Progress was not the big finisher. Hold 
holding back with our dragon might end up being a thing here, but we are actually in pretty good shape as far as things go. Like, 8 damage is a lot, and this thing isn't going to be a 5 damage hitter every turn. In fact, I'd say it isn't going to be a 5 damage hitter this turn. Not with a little luck. Now, oh, Genetrix Hero. Okay, so that's probably gonna make uh, eh, making a big Verret. Interesting. Eight, three, and two. Well, that's lethal for us, actually. We just have to do this. Uh, if we block the eight, eight, then it's a whole other problem. But here we get a four, four dragon, and that kills them in the air. So we're good to go. Experience is the best teacher. And there we go. Lethal in the air. Alright. Close it out. Feeling pretty good about that. Alright, that does it for this edition of Eternal Brews. Uh, now, this is a pretty legendary heavy deck since it's using a wide variety of legends. Keep in mind that this, since this is a smorgasbord of dragons, you can modify the deck however you like, and it's not too bad if you go in for substitutions. There's quite a few uncommon or rare dragons that will work just fine, especially if you manage to get your hands on a couple of copies of Kozen Darkheart, which is, I would say, a very important card if you're playing with a large number of dragons. Cruel Wyvark uh, is a really solid option. Option. You can also use Topaz Drake to simulate the sort of effect that we were getting with Soulfire Drake. Very similar effects at slightly different costs. Um, you can use Akantha the Huntress to kill things and get some card value. You have Marsh Dragon for life gain. Noxious Wyvark comes with its own Malediction, and that's a very useful effect that we actually really considered putting into this list. Dread Hellkite has, of course, the ability to play Cowardice on units and also is a 4-drop similar to Raging Fire Maw. I actually think that Dread Hellkite may be more useful than Raging Fire in this deck, but Raging Fire Mod does have that sort of defensive advantage, so uh, I'm up in the air on it. There's there's a lot of different options. You can also use Sky Craig Wyvark, and that one I don't recommend quite as much. It's a little bit on the weak side for things that you're, we're doing here. Pouncing Drake is a eh, lovely-ish five that unfortunately doesn't Dragon Forge very well, but is kind of nice for its ability to play off the top of your deck. And yeah, overall there's a plenty of different options. You can also use Cinder Maw Tota. We specifically did not use Cinder Maw Tota because we tested quite a bit with it and we found it to be way too slow. Um, it, the Dragon Reduction in cost is really, really handy, but a lot of your opponents are stocking Silences. They're stocking good answers to the whole setup and then like if you aren't getting the maximum value out of Cinder Matota, it makes it a little bit difficult. Um, I would say that like the treasure trove reduction is sometimes very worth it but similar to Garden of Omens it just feels like something that we want to put in the sideboard or something along those lines. So um, and in this case we went for Garden of Omens because it was a little bit more interactive than Cinder Matota, and interactivity still very much matters in expeditions. All right that's it for me. Thank you so much for watching. We'll be back with more brews and the rest of the uh, card breakdowns for uh, Flame of Zolta probably starting tomorrow. So see you guys next time and have a lovely evening. Thanks again for watching. I am on Twitch and Patreon and Twitter and that's about it. Bye everyone. Cheers.